were afraid they might not come back to the masjid again. It's not definitive that if you talk about, for example, hijab, oh, the sister might not come back to the masjid. Why is it that we feel the world revolves around that one person that might? Mm. All these professional colleges, they tell you how tough it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And people are submissive. We're given them the impression that we need them. Yeah. We don't need you. No, I'm not worried at all. I rely on God, Allah. It's always been perplexing to me. This whole concept of, well, we're just going to be selective and we're going to keep this knowledge. And we're not going to tell people about it because we're afraid they might not come back to the masjid again. Why is it that we feel the world revolves around that one person that might? Mabniyun ala dhan, ala wahm This is, it's a might. It's, it's speculative. It's not definitive that if you talk about, for example, hijab, Oh, the sister might not come back to the masjid. Mm. Okay, let me ask you this. First off, this is not something that you would seriously consider because you can apply this to any aspect of the religion. Oh, don't talk about usury because those who have mortgages might not come back to the masjid. Oh, don't talk about halal zabiha because those who believe in halal, they might not come back. Where do, where do you draw the line? And that actually defies human nature. Coming Going into a professional college like myself, all these professional colleges they tell you how tough it's going to be and how disciplined you need to be in those colleges and how you can't take anything for granted, how you have to be professional in and out of the college. You can get kicked out if outside the college, if you're, you know, mm -hmm. if you get a criminal record, you didn't, you know, and people are submissive. They're, yes, sir. Right? And mm -hmm. the, the lineup to get in, the thousands of applicants to try to get into these colleges doesn't stop. That doesn't deter anybody from doing that. So that actually defies actual human behavior because human behavior if you have something that is valuable that you said that is important then you have to follow the rules and what it dictates what the expectations are and and as you said earlier did you notice the difference between the masjid did you this is why you get the sentiment of some muslims making you feel as though they're doing you a favor when they come to the masjid yeah do you know where this comes from yeah because we're giving them the impression that we need them yeah. we don't need you yeah. We don't want to, and I know this sounds a little bit harsh, yeah. but Muslims need to embody the, the, the obvious fact that you need Allah. Yeah. The masjid does not need you to yeah. survive. Yeah. This doesn't mean that we're going to push you away from the masjid, but there's this growing sentiment that, when, well, at least I wear hijab. You, when you wear hijab, you wear it for yourself. Mm. When you come to the masjid, you're, you're doing it for yourself. Man if you do good, it's for yourself. Mm. But this is, did you notice also, though? Surah Hujrat, like don't think that you're Islam, you're doing a favor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, but Allah bestows his favor upon you yeah. Yeah. because he guided you to Islam. Yeah. Right? But who's doing this? We have to kind of zoom out and stop acting as though the world revolves around this one sister who might not come back to the masjid because we told her that when you come to the masjid, we have to dress appropriately. Mm. The world does not revolve around her. It doesn't revolve around me. It doesn't revolve around you, right? Mm. We have to stop this whole, there's something exceptionally unique about me, right? It's, it, it, we have to be fair in, in, in our approach.